Welcome to the fifth part of Spring Boot with Kubernetes tutorial series. In this video, we are going to learn how to use Spring Data JPA DTO projections. First, let us understand what is the need for DTO projections. So, in our current implementation, we have this JPA entity called Bookmark, which has few properties. And in our Bookmark service, we are loading a page of Bookmark objects and then wrapping it in a bookmarks TTO with all the pagination information and then returning it. Uh, right now we have only very few properties, uh, ID, title, URL and uh, created it. But just imagine there are a lot more properties to it. And uh, sometimes in the list view, we may not need to display all this information, right? Maybe we need only a very um, subset of those properties we want to display on the UI or something like that. Okay. In that case, it's going to be a lot of wasted resources to load all that additional columns from the database and then sending across uh, to the UI and then just to ignore them finally. So instead, what we should be doing is we should load the data that is only required for that use case, right? Uh, if we directly load entire uh, entity, you cannot do that. You, mostly you will be loading all the at least basic properties. Maybe if you have uh, child relationships, maybe you can uh, load them on a lazy basis, but uh, most of the basic properties will be loaded automatically. So that is one problem where DTO projection can help you to load only desired data. And another problem is when you are loading, uh, typically when you are loading any entity using Hibernate JPA, it also does this dirty checking like if you mutated any property values or so and then automatically tries to persist back into the database. But in our case, we don't need that. We are reading for the entire read only purpose. We are not making any changes to it. So we don't need that kind of a dirty check mechanism. So here DTO projections also helps in that like uh, when you load the data using a DTO projection, it's not going to keep track of uh, changes uh, to automatically persist back. So it is going to help in these uh, two aspects of it. So typically with this in mind, what we do um, in generally people go and create a DTO mapper um, like to understand the first to address the first problem of uh, um, I don't want to load all the data, I want to load only the required data. What people generally do, they go and create a DTO, let's call it as bookmark DTO and here we may have properties. Uh, right now it's going to be exact copy of these properties uh, but just assume uh, maybe we don't need all these properties or we might uh, want to use a different data types. So whatever, assuming you might have a different representation of the bookmark as a TTO. So here again, let us um, use Lamba to generate setters, getters, no argument constructor and all argument constructor. Okay. So what people do, they create a mapper let's call it as bookmark mapper and here it will contain a method for converting to from entity to DTO to uh, the written type would be bookmark DTO to DTO okay and we are going to take input as JPA entity. So here bookmark DTO it is bookmark DTO and then return it. So what we do uh, we simply populate um, taking from entity ttvo dot set title set url ttvo dot set created it 
so we have a simple method and we can make it as a spring component and inject this into bookmark service so here once we got this uh, bookmarks page uh, here uh, after calling this find all what we can do we can map and let us use uh, bookmark mapper to use to DTO of bookmark oh, okay so we can simply use method reference here so now instead of returning um, bookmarks it's going to return a uh, bookmark details so here we need to change this not to take a entity but a dto right and also here we are going to change this to dto cool uh, when we come back so now it should be fine and let us take a look at the controller now it is also looks fine so just to quickly recap what we are doing when we call this uh, rep uh, repository dot find all it's going to give a page of bookmark objects uh, entities and we are uh, passing through all those entities through this mapping function which convert each map bookmarker entity to bookmark dto okay and finally we are going to get a, a page of bookmark dtos and we are wrapping it in uh, bookmarks dto and then passing it back now if we start the application it should work exactly same because we are not even changing any names also in our dto we have exact replica of uh, where is our dto we have exactly same replica of the properties but just imagine like um, in your entity there could be a lot of uh, additional data but we don't want all that uh, we can have a subset of uh, this one that suits for our use case okay uh, if i go back to localhost 8080 slash api slash bookmarks i get the exact same response no change but here if you take a look at it the problem is we are still loading the bookmark entity from the database and then mapping it assuming let's say bookmark contains this entity contains around 20 properties and then we are loading all those 20 properties and then uh, dropping off while doing this TTO mapping but still we are loading all this additional data from the database which is unnecessary so this is where DTO projections come into picture what we can do instead of loading the entities and then mapping in our code go to our bookmark repository and here let us create another method like uh, page of bookmark dtos and let's find bookmarks I'll find bookmarks method which takes pageable argument okay so here what we can do we can use at query and usually what we can do using plain jpql we can say um, select b from bookmark b we can leave it at uh, and it would return a uh, page of bookmark but we don't want to return bookmark we want to return bookmark dto so what we can do new bookmark dto so we are going to construct this object using uh, expressions right we we have this bookmark dto and it is in the package of com.sivalabs bookmarker domain so let me copy that okay so here uh, also we have all our constructor right so what we can do it's gonna take um, id and bookmark.title bookmark.url 
bookmark that created it okay so what we are doing here um, when we load the data itself we are uh, saying only we need these columns and then we are constructing a bookmark dto object and uh, spring data jpa takes care of applying the pagination instead of loading everything so finally we are simply returning bookmark dto page not the bookmark entities page okay and when we come back here instead of uh, calling this find all and then doing the mapping now what we can do let's call find bookmarks and pass page book that's it you don't need that uh, mapper okay cool now let us restart and call the api cool we are getting the same response with same data no change in the behavior but right now we are optimizing the query uh, loading where we are not reading unnecessary data and we are not reading the uh, entities in a editable mode we are just reading as a tto so that it doesn't do any of these study uh, checking mechanisms and all those things okay so now let us uh, take a quick glance at the documentation about projections okay um, let's see we have a uh, here an example of person entity with few properties okay so there are two ways we can achieve this dto projections one is interface based projections what we can do instead of uh, creating a class we can simply create an interface and create these getter methods um, it just it's not uh, plain properties usually we have this java bean naming convention right suppose if you have first name property the getter would be get first name so we can simply define these getters and then use this collection or page whatever and use that interface type so spring data jpa is going to take care of uh, doing that uh, mapping and then uh, binding to these properties like uh, loading first name column into this property and last name into this property and you can use uh, name only uh, object in your code okay that is using interface based projections another approach would be using class based dtos so here uh, we have class based projections using dtos so here we can create a class and then uh, create these properties and then uh, have a constructor based on whatever the attributes you want to construct and then you can have getters only and finally you can simply uh, use that again in the same way like instead of using interface you will be using this class so this is the approach we followed class based uh, projection we created a class okay and uh, we created this uh, projection so that's how we can use these uh, DTO projections to load only selective data that is optimized for your use case and uh, not doing all this study checking which uh, inherently going to uh, yield better performance okay cool we are almost done with our first api implementation to get bookmarks with pagination support however we haven't written any tests for it but for this api endpoint there isn't much business logic um, we are just reading the data from database and then uh, wrapping it in a dto and then returning it back so instead of writing unit tests i would like to write a integration test using test containers so if you are not familiar with uh, how to write unit tests integration tests and all i have created a video on spring boot tips testing so where i talked about how to create uh, unit tests slice test and integration tests and also i have created another video um, spring boot tips integration testing with test containers so this is what we are going to do for our api uh, testing like we are going to use test containers to spin up a postgres uh, database as a docker container and then we are going to hit the api endpoint to fetch bookmarks so that's what we are going to implement in the next video once the integration tests are implemented for this api endpoint before moving on to other use case implementations i would like to have a streamlined development process 
where whenever I want to implement a new feature, I want to create a new branch and then implement my changes there and then push the branch and have the GitHub actions triggered and then run all the tests. And once everything is fine, I would like to merge it back into the main branch. So once we are done with this integration test, that is what we are going to work on setting up the GitHub actions uh, pipeline. Okay, cool. The ORM frameworks Hibernate and JPA, they are very easy to get started, but hard to master. There are a lot of complex topics that uh, that takes some time to understand. I would like to give a reference to some of the best resources that are available. One is uh, vladmehelshia.com. So here, um, if you ever work with Hibernate and JPA, most likely you already know about this site and him. He is the best man who knows everything about uh, Hibernate and JPA. So here you can go to his blog and you can come here tutorials and Hibernate. Uh, here you can see a ton of tutorials organized very nicely. So you can learn every topic that is uh, relevant to Hibernate and JPA okay and also there are other tutorials like uh, um, uh, sql and spring yeah. go and check out he contains best tutorials about hibernate okay and another very wonderful resource is uh, thoughts on java earlier it used to be thoughts on java i guess uh, now it is changed to uh, this uh, here he has a lot of uh, wonderful high quality tutorials uh, you can go here and see there are lots of tutorials and also uh, he has a youtube channel where he posts a lot of amazing high quality videos about hibernate and jpa i strongly recommend you to subscribe to this channel and then watch this so that you can use hibernate and jpa in a very performant way okay so yeah i strongly recommend you to check out these two uh, resources okay cool so that's all for this video and I hope you are enjoying this series. Um, stay tuned for the upcoming videos. Thank you. Bye bye.